When they told me my GFR was 12 and to prepare for the big D word, I said no. I'm gonna do whatever it takes. Today, my GFR is 25. I've reversed renal failure. Gathering here, guys, today I have an incredibly inspiring success story to share with you. Charlotte contacted me via email and she also shared her story here on Double Okini. She is a nurse, 59 years old, and when she was just 50, she received a heart transplant. Unfortunately, renal disease is a frequent complication after a heart transplant, but nobody warned her about that. Her GFR dropped to 12. That's when she said, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to avoid this, to avoid the big D word. And well, she did just that. She is not only is in stage four now, not risking dialysis anymore, but her GFR has been going up instead of down for the last six months. It felt amazing to me. So I interviewed her. She told me everything about the diet she is following, the remedies that help her, the good habits she started. So let's hear from her. Charlotte, how have you found out you had kidney problems? I had a heart transplant nine years ago and with a heart transplant or any transplant, we need anti-rejection medication. That particular medication harms kidneys. So that is the root of my kidney problems. I've been in stage four for quite some time until I had contracted some type of respiratory problem. That was pretty hard on my system and the whole picture brought me from stage 4 where I was for 5 years to stage 5, the dreaded 5. And then when I recovered to a point that I could see my nephrologist, she said, well, the big D word, it's time for dialysis for you. Okay guys, until this part, her story is nothing unheard of. A kidney issue that could have been avoided if only the patient would have been informed earlier. And a diagnosis that came way too late like in many cases. Charlotte is a nurse and she has been seeing a nephrologist after her transplant. And yet nobody told her she could have taken steps to protect her kidneys. She had to find out by herself and eventually she did. Another question for Charlotte. What did you do when the diagnosis arrived? When I was told about the dialysis, I picked myself up. I said, I'm gonna do whatever it takes. But all that my nephrologist told me was to take a class that's offered in the communities to prepare for the big D. That's where I heard about Catherine's channel on YouTube. I'm getting chills telling you that because that was a pivotal point. I started making the recipes and just doing what I had to do to take care of myself in a new way. I stopped eating meat. I am mostly vegan. I started taking the powerful antioxidant to help me sleep better. Okay, okay, this is when I stopped her. You see, I really wanted to hear more about what helped her. I wanted to know what she was eating when she was in stage 5 and I wanted to know what antioxidant helped her. Because you know, what Charlotte achieved is outstanding. Her GFR was 12. Now, GFR is the main indicator of kidney function. It tells us exactly how much our kidneys are working on a scale from 0 to 120. And when someone's GFR is below 60, it means they have kidney disease. But when GFR drops below 15, it means they need dialysis, like in the case of Charlotte. And while there are certain things you can do when your GFR is, you know, around 30 or 40, to greatly delay dialysis and improve your kidney function, not much works anymore when your GFR is 12. And I really wanted to know everything about the diet that helped her, the antioxidant, the good habits, so, what diet help you doubling your GFR? Since I received my new heart, I try my best to live to the fullest every day. It's something that sits in the back of my mind all the time. My line of thinking is that I now have to live life for two people, myself and my donor. But I didn't know you needed to avoid meat and fish when you have a kidney issue. 
And I was always told that meat is good for you and that fish is great for your heart. But I'm almost vegan now. No meat, no fish, no eggs, no milk or cheese either. Finding a diet that works for both my new heart and my kidneys is hard. I'm completely avoiding meat and fish now. I have to take a supplement for that. But I don't really like supplements and there are just a few that I take. I already take eight different kinds of medication twice a day. Right after my transplant, I was downing 40 plus pills a day at four separate times. Okay guys, so Charlotte is following a diet that I usually refer to as the VLPD. It's frankly the only kind of diet that can really help you when you are near stage 5. It didn't surprise me at all reading about that from her. By the way, I talk about the VLPD, the diet that can help people in stage 4 and 5 of kidney disease in my video up here. Now something that surprised me a bit is that she had to take a supplement once she had to give up eating fish. And that's because fish do actually contain an essential nutrient that's very hard to get when you don't eat fish anymore. This is a nutrient that's key to protect both your heart and kidneys. I'm talking about omega-3 fatty acids. Okay guys, I believe this is a really underrated supplement for those with kidney problems because you see, omega-3s actually are an essential nutrient just like a vitamin. You cannot live without enough omega-3s in your diet. And that's why Charlotte, who is only taking two supplements, is taking omega-3s. Now, there are foods that contain some omega-3s and that are suitable for a renal diet. They include chia seeds, flax seeds and walnuts. But supplementing this essential nutrient has impressive benefits for your heart and kidneys. Taking omega-3 fatty acid supplements has been linked to reduce kidney damage in patients with CKD. There is evidence that it can help with heart health, also cholesterol levels, triglycerides, inflammation and more. Another thing omega-3s can help you with is proteinuria a most important predictor of kidney disease progression. One large review of studies conducted on nine trials comprising 444 patients concluded that omega-3s significantly reduce the risk of dialysis and is associated with a lower risk of proteinuria. Now guys, Charlotte also mentioned a second supplement she is taking and that really helped her too. Let's hear about that. I started taking the powerful antioxidant melatonin to help me sleep better because I also found out that losing sleep is bad for your kidneys and I was sleeping very little and of course I got back into my exercise and I felt my body strengthening. But I'm so excited to tell you my love number is only 3 weeks on the diet my GFR which was 30 and pretty sadly 12 it went up to 17. Now that doesn't sound like a whole lot, but that is a lot because the GFR is not easy to move. I was able to say I'm too healthy for dialysis because the cutoff is at 15 and that was so encouraging. My creatinine went from 3.7 to 2.6. I shared with my nephrologist, of course, what I was doing and I think she will be watching your videos too. And she also confirmed that I needed to sleep more. And I can tell you my latest blood work, which was two months ago, is GFR 25 and the creatinine 2.21 and I think I'm still improving. What an amazing story! Her achievement is frankly impressive and I really believe she is right about the importance of sleep. You see, according to science, poor sleep is one of the most underrated dangers for our kidneys. One in three of us suffers from poor sleep with stress, computers, and taking work home often blamed. I haven't slept in a year. And the result of all those sleepless nights can do more damage than people realize. Did you know that sleeping less than 6 hours per night is proven to have profound consequences on your physical health, obesity, coronary heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, and a shortened life expectancy are all linked to poor sleep. And the kidney actually seems to be the organ most impacted by lack of sleep. Researchers think that lack of sleep can directly affect the physiology of the kidney, causing serious damage. How can we avoid this? Well, Charlotte mentioned that she only takes two supplements. One is omega-3 fatty acids, great for heart and kidney health. The other one is melatonin. 
What is melatonin? Melatonin is a hormone that your brain produces in response to darkness. When taken as a supplement, it also has incredibly powerful antioxidant properties. Melatonin has become a very popular and inexpensive sleeping aid. It's particularly powerful in its stances where the circadian rhythm is disrupted. You mean living on jet lag time? It really works. I can vouch for it personally, by the way. When I take it, I always feel more energized the day after. Now, melatonin works for me, but it may work even better for someone with CAD. You see, studies say that the production of melatonin is decreased with the progression of CAD. Someone with kidney problems may experience huge benefits from this natural remedy. And increasing sleep quality and duration is a proven way of protecting your kidneys. A study shown that melatonin administration attenuated oxidative stress, inflammation, and restored renal function and structure. Are you serious? How to take melatonin to sleep better? Melatonin can be taken in doses around 0.3 mg per day, and my advice here is to start with a lower dose and increase as needed. Take it 2 hours to 30 minutes before bedtime for maximum effectiveness. What you need to know about melatonin is that you can also buy it at the supermarket, but you will need to cut those pills. You see, most melatonin supplements come in one milligram tablet, but that's way more melatonin than you actually need. The human body only produces 0.3 milligrams of melatonin per day. Because while higher doses can't hurt you except for making you sleep worse, it can reduce even further the body natural production of melatonin, not to mention that you will be extremely groggy the morning after if you take too much melatonin. But you can mostly find 1 mg tablets. What I usually do is to buy this cheap format and cut the pills in three, so I save money and sleep better. And if you want to see me cutting some vitamin supplements too, to make them more effective, this video up here is for you. Time now to say thank you to Charlotte for sharing her story. And guys, if you have a personal story that you want to share here, contact me, write it down in comment section. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless.